Good evening and welcome back to Irons United for our match review of the the interesting day of friendly. Still, two uh, our big our massive squads split in two between two friendlies, one at Wickham Wanderers and the other one at Ipswich Town. Um, an interesting an interesting day today. Interesting. Two two games on at the same time, and I don't know if we'll get into it, but we can talk about the players that weren't there for either game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and. Um, uh, but yeah, let let why don't we go why don't we go on to that later, shall we? Yeah, we'll go on to that one later. Um yeah, it was interesting. I done a watch along, which was I'm not gonna lie to you, it was quite tough to try and keep an eye on both the games, but well, I done it and it worked and, and and we had a bit of a laugh between some me and some of the, the, the banter in the in the group was quite good. But what we did see today was a really strong mixture of experience and youth over the two squads that were sent to both the clubs, um, of course, Ipswich Town currently in in League One, and Wickham Wanderers who got promoted to the Championship. Still, you managed to watch the Wickham game. I predominantly kept my eye on the Ipswich game. Which one shall we go through? Why don't, <laughs> what why don't we kick off? <laughs> <laughs> why don't we go through the uh, Wickham one? Because I'm going to be totally honest with you. Um, I was working because you know most of us are working from home at the moment. And uh, I had one eye on the game and one eye managing. I was reading a contract at the time, so yeah. you can imagine how interesting that was. Yeah, you know. So uh, I, let, let's do let's do the Wiccan game because um, it was uh, it was a bit of a breeze, a bit of a walk in the park. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a pretty easy game. It started off within the first five minutes. Uh, people are saying Masawaku scored a screamer. And the reason why I'm saying people say is because the cameraman missed the goal. And you were, you're kind of watching the game and you were watching everything going on just outside the box. And you saw the ball land at, um, at Masawaku's feet. And the next minute you saw the ball in the net because <laughs> the cameraman didn't switch over in time. And everyone was saying it was a screamer. I can't see how anybody said it was a screamer. He did shoot from outside the box. And I know I'm a bit of a Masuaku basher, so I'm not going to sort of diss the guy. But uh, he, def he definitely shot from outside the box, and it, and it went in. You know, and whether it was a screamer or not is another <laughs> it's another matter. But, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I did I did have it slightly on in the background, and and the thing I did notice in particular about the the game you were watching was the erraticness of the cameraman. Like very it was, erratic. It, it, it was as if the cameraman, the the proper cameraman, didn't turn up, and they've just grabbed a <laughs> younger boy. Mate, can you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you just keep an eye out? Because it kept zooming in and zooming out, and I was just like. I can't focus on that. I just need to stay with the game I'm watching just now. It was it was really really erratic. It was it was difficult to watch. But uh, anyway, he got off he got off to a flying start, or the team did. Um, it was an interesting team because uh, you saw Baptiste there, and I know you're going to talk about a centre back at the game that you were watching. Baptiste looked decent, you know, not not bad, not a bad little game for him. Um, there's quite a lot of experience in there. It was interesting to see Cullen and Noble side by side. Uh, I, I would have expected Cullen maybe to have played in the other game uh, to see how he would have fared in the same sort of position. Um, <clears throat> and for all intents and purposes, the likes of uh, Bowen, Fornells, Antonio, uh, Ogbonna, they all picked off, and Johnson, they all picked off from where they left off at the end of last yeah. season. They were yeah. sharp. Antonio was sharp, you know, his usual bullying around, bullying the uh, play, uh, defenders around. Fornals had some one or two nice little touches. Lanzini as well. But it's interesting. Lanzini scored his first goal. Didn't look like he celebrated much. He celebrated more for his second. Yeah. But Bowen picked up, you know, Bowen was in, you know, a bit of a fox in the box for his goals. He was just in the right place in the box at the right time. And uh, it's, it's really quite, it was... Given that Wickham have just gone up to the championship, and ironically, it's which had just gone down to Division One. Is that correct? Oh no, no, no they've been in League One. That's the second season. Oh well, have they? I thought that. Okay, my apologies. Yeah. So, um, given that Wickham are the ones that went up, um, I think they've got a lot to. Uh, I know it's only a friendly, but I think they've got a, a lot to do to stay in that league because their defending was woeful. And yeah. um, but you know uh, we're not worried about Wickham. We're more worried about West Ham. Yeah. And some some of the young lads, uh, people are going to probably ask, what about Cullen? <sighs> he was in the game. 
Uh, but uh, I, yeah, Mr. has just said Baptiste was good. You, you, Johnson was good. Uh, that you know, some of the some of the youngsters in the team looked quite assured, and uh, I, I, I know people are talking about it. You know, Cullen has had a great couple of seasons uh, with um, Charlton, and maybe it's his turn to come back and take the uh, noble mantle. I didn't really see enough, to be quite honest with you, to suggest that. Uh, but he played all right, you know. He, it's he kind of make bad. or break season for him, though, isn't it? If 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 we don't sell him, it's absolutely make or break season for. Colin. I think I think I think his time has come and gone, and yeah. and what I would have been, what I'd like to have seen, I would have liked to have seen um, uh, Co uh, Connor Coventry because I don't think he was in our squad. I don't know he was if oh, he, he was. was... Today, yeah, I've, I'll, I'll talk to you about him in a minute. Connor Coventry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he's the one that we have more. Uh, I think that there's more going to be more interest in. Mate, you're going to have to excuse me one second, okay? No, nope, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll let be you back in a, back on. An yeah, that's fine. Um, so <laughs> Stel's throwing me right under the bus. Um, what, what do you guys think of the the Wickham game today? Um, obviously, I'll talk to you soon about the Ipswich one. Very soon. But people are already coming in saying that Baptiste had a good game alongside Ogbonna. What I want to know is, what do you think of Ogbonna's performance? What did you think of the mix-up between the youth and the experienced player? I mean, you know, Cullen's been in and around the squad for a reasonable amount of time. But I think we were probably, as what Stel said, I never watched the Wickham game, but I maybe was expecting a little bit more from Cullen and Noble Stel. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it is the first game of pre-season we need to you know take that oh i've lost you still can't hear you no one can i can't hear you <laughs> it is. Myself. it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's pre-season but it's quite different to other season other pre-seasons because it's only three weeks since we last played a uh a, a game um so you, you could see the sharpness in some of the players um how they they kind of kept that sharpness. I I think I just caught the tail end of what you said about Noble and Cullen. You you expected yeah. more. Noble, I, I that's why I kind of think it was a mistake to have played Noble and Cullen in the same team. I think they should have been separated. But who who, who am I to, to to say that? But uh I would have liked to have seen Cullen play with maybe Socek, for example, to see how we'd have how he would have fared along alongside him. Um and I think I think Cullen is a little bit too much like Nolan. Uh, Nolan Noble, sorry, is a little bit too much like Noble. Uh, is just a younger version of. But I don't yeah. think he's as I don't think he's as good as. Um, I just don't really think he he's his time has his time has come and gone. Yeah, yeah, there you go, Kent. He's 24 years old. If he hasn't made it yet, he he isn't really going to make it. And and it's a shame because I know Charlton love him and. And I know they, they they think the world of him, but uh, it's funny because we, we talk about other players who have been um, at West Ham and we always talk about how maybe they found their level. Like Hugill, he's now gone yeah. to Nor Norwich. Yeah. He's found his level in the championship. Yeah. That's where he was came from, etc. And I just think maybe with the greatest of respect, I think maybe Cullen's level... It is a is a mid table championship team. Do you think? Do you think? Then, I mean, in particular for you watching the Wickham game, you were probably taking a key interest in the younger players like Cullen and Baptiste and of course we've seen a little bit about Johnson so I mean I mean let's go into Baptiste and let's go into the position which is we, we, we're aware that we think Moyes wants to strengthen in that Absolutely. position do you think he saw enough in a, in Baptiste and I mean listen again I need to be reminded of the fact it's the first game of pre-season mm -hmm. but, the, but the season is only around the corner still and, exactly. and you know we haven't sold any players yet we don't have the money there in our ranks um, well we're we're clearly going to need uh, backup in those areas. If we don't buy, I think I think we seem to be a little bit blessed because I know you're going to talk about uh, a player that you were watching in centre as a centre back. I think we seem to be quite blessed with qu quite some decent talent at, uh, as as centre backs. Yeah. Um, now it, it it will be quite risky um, playing a whole load of youngsters in defence. Uh, I think you do need that. I, I get what Moyes says. I think you do need that mixture of uh, of uh, youth and experience at the back. <clears throat> but it's it's really uh, good to see that we've got a couple of quite decent looking centre backs. Yeah. Um, and I know 
you know, Cardozo was meant to be the one who was going to be the breakthrough from the uh, youth squad because he was bought, if you remember, he was bought at the time. Uh, we were told that, you know, Pellegrini bought him because he was going to be first team ready. And, Absolutely. and well, he, he wasn't, was he? Yeah, no, um, he's definitely not. Yeah, so to have I seen mean, Baptiste play, I think, was a good thing. Yeah, and he, he looked all right. He looked all right. And then, of course, we what David Martin, I heard, was substituted at a certain point, and we got to see the first, you know, for the first glance, Anam as well, playing in, in goals. I don't know. Anang, yeah. Anang is highly rated. Um, is a very highly rated uh, keeper, as is Nathan Trott. Um, it's, I, I don't know of the two. If, if I was a betting man... Uh, of the two, I think it would be Nathan Trott that might get the nod for third team, uh, third goalie Premier. Yeah. Uh, for, only because he's gone out on loan. Only because he went out on loan to. Uh, he's had oh. a bit of experience with Wimbledon, uh, and then maybe, maybe uh, if if one of the two is going to be sort of uh, brought into the first team squad as a third third choice keeper, I would think Trot, but. And Ang looked all right. And they're both very highly rated keepers. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And then going forward, uh, still, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of attacking options there. In actual fact, there was a lot of attacking options over the two sides that were were, were playing today. So you, we got to see Bowen, Lanzini, Fornals and Antonio. You mentioned briefly there Lanzini. But how, how did you rate the four of them in particular? I mean, Bowen, did he, you said he hit the ground running. But, I mean, Fornals? Yeah. Fornals looked good. Uh, yeah. Fornals ha had a decent game. Antonio had his usual game, you know, uh, up there bullying everyone, etc. And uh, it's it's quite intriguing because uh, Bowen, Fornals, and Lanzini uh, kind of gelled quite yeah. well. Um, yeah. And and you know, I think uh, it's going to be really intriguing, isn't it? Because if we don't if we don't sell any of the players, if we don't loan any of the players out or anything, and we don't get anyone in. I actually said on, on the show on Sunday, uh, if we don't actually buy anyone, I don't think it really matters because we've actually got some really decent players in our squad. And if we utilise them in the right way, there's no reason why they can't, you know, they can't excel. Um, I think of the players that maybe Lanzini just just that still doesn't look like, still just doesn't look like he's, he's the, the Lanzini that we, that we once knew. Uh, but he, play, he played all right. There you go. Gary, Gary thinks he played poorly, you know. But uh, I think he did all right. I mean, he scored two goals. Like I said, his first goal, he didn't even look like he was celebrating. But uh, Messi. Well, I'm should not we, sure. I'm not should sure. we do a swap deal for Messi and Lanzini? Stella. I tell you what, we'll give them Anderson, Fornells and Lanzini for Messi. How about that? Stella, I'm, not, I'm not aware. I don't think you've seen the breaking news tonight that Messi's actually asked to leave yeah i know he's asked yeah. to leave yeah i don't know if you've seen that sorry <laughs> so, yeah, no i did i did and uh yeah. city are poised aren't they he's going to city isn't he yeah you know, so we're going to finally get to see lionel Me Lionel messi in the premier league yeah well we'll see him in the premier league but the fans won't be able to go and see him because <laughs> we're not allowed in the bloody stadiums uh, shall we get on to the uh ipswich game go on mate yeah yeah but my mouse is not working so i can't really navigate the stream yard enough <laughs> as well um right okay so i'll get the team up for you um of course they'll watch the wickham game um i paid the money to watch the Ipswich game but i tell you what i was quite pleasantly surprised by what i got to saw so we, we had randolph uh, as the goalkeeper we had alisi balbuena creswell and coventry and how they lined up was it was balbuena and alisi in the middle it's two center half pairings with creswell on the left and Connor coventry played the right back we had oh, Sochi. we played right back. Yes, uh -huh, and I'll, I'll tell you a bit about him in a, in a minute. Yeah, so oh. we had Solchek, Wilshire, Yarmolenko, Anderson, Diangana, and Haller up top. And what we saw was quite a lot of swapping between Yarmolenko and Anderson in the supporting role to Haller. Now, in the first half in particular still, um, Haller must have had three clear-cut chances. Um, and I was commenting on it as we were watching the game, and they were literally li really like... At the time, you would be saying to yourself, for £46 million, you need to be putting those in the back of the net against the opposition we were playing against. But at the end of the day, we still have to remember that it's a pre-season game and it's against lower league uh, opposition. We're just back from a, you know, crazy times, etc. You know, I sound like I'm doing him an injustice and he went and off off he went in the second half and scored a hat-trick. Do you know what I mean? Like, how, how can I really, really fault him? But, you know, 
players I was looking forward to seeing today out of that lineup in particular were Dean Gana because he's on the topic of conversation from every fan's um, point of view. He's back with West Ham after a successful season with West Brom. Connor Coventry. And to be honest with you, I didn't know a huge amount about Alessi. But I tell you what still, if he can produce what he did today for West Ham, we have no problem at centre-half. Now, very quickly in the first like couple of minutes, Balbuena got a hold of the ball and played an awful clearance directly to the Ipswich side. And straight away you thought he's sluggish and it put a lot of pressure on Conor Coventry because Conor Coventry was playing on the, the obviously the right of Balbuena, who's the right-footed centre-half. And Elise is the left-footed centre-half playing beside Creswell. And quite quickly you saw that Ipswich were going to attack that side. So that put pressure on Conor Coventry maybe with the first 20, 25 minutes. And he looked he looked like he was potentially having to cover for Balbuena quite a lot. But what we saw was, I, I couldn't believe it. I had to actually at some point go and check the age of this guy. He was so calm. He was so collected. He got a hold of the ball. He was calling the lines. He was absolutely telling Balbuena where to go, calming Balbuena <laughs> down. The ball would then, you know, a couple of times throughout the game, they were playing the ball through the back four. And every time Alessi got the ball, his head was up. He was looking round. And still, he wasn't just doing short passes. He was pinging the ball. Are we, was... um, are we talking about uh, a future uh, Rio Ferdinand on our hands? I, I, I just, I'm really worried about getting carried away about the young lad. He's represented England at all levels up to, up to just before 20, uh, like under 19 level. Um, he has been scouted a lot from all other clubs in, in England. Um, but all you need to do is really Google the images and, 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 and look at the size of the fella. Like he stands out. He's 6'3", uh, isn't he, or something? Yeah, and he's, and he's solid still. He's absolutely solid. But he's, Have he we does, got him on a contract? I, I, I need to look at you carry on. I'm going to yeah. check it out. But he's extremely, because I know, I know like about a month or two ago, I did an update on the show and talked about an awful lot of players that had signed extended contracts. Yeah. I think he was one of them, but you carry what, on and I'll do extremely it. <clears throat> for, for his age. What an extremely knowledgeable centre half, something that we've definitely been missing for such a long time. Now, I don't want to try my best not to get carried away pre-season. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that throughout this show. <laughs> but still, the, 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 again, there were several times that he, when he received the ball, because he he was looking up and looking in front of him, and he was creating space and creating time, he was actually passing the ball forward. And he was actually, they were penetrating passes sometimes. But I think in the first half, I was, it must have been three particular passes he made. He was on a halfway line. He looked up and he pinpointed Yarmolenko making a run and it was the most beautiful ball I've saw from a centre-half. Then he'd done it about two minutes later to Hilaire and that was one of the chances Hilaire should have put away and it was because it was nearly assisted by our centre-half young lad, um, Alisi. He was so confident when Ipswich were in the attack inside the 18-yard box. He was strong. He was pushing players off the ball. He was blocking chances you know we went through that stage where all our defenders like it was like Winston Reid and James Collins were constantly throwing their body on the line to just block 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 he was giving us that throughout the first half and the, and the reason why I'm really passionate about it is I didn't expect it I did not yeah. expect that yeah. performance from that young lad to come well, in let's let's give you a bit of background on him um he's developed through the youth squad played for the under 18s and the under 23s he went out on loan last season to Accrington Stanley, came back. He is signed on a contract till the end of next year. Well, next June. Next so June. If, and he's, to be fair, if he's and good, to be fair, we Ken need Hammer to... Uh, was on the stream with me when I was talking and he did say he watched him last year. He spent last season on loan at Accrington Stanley. He's played 10 games with Atkinson Stanley. So, Kent, yes, I totally, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, you 100% did say it. And I'll tell you what, mate, and I mean, let, let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you watched the Ipswich game, what did you actually think of his performance in particular? And I'll tell you what, Still, what he did was he actually brought Cam into that defence. And what we saw from the start was panic. Literally, minute one, it was instant panic in our defence. And very quickly, it all calmed down. And then it allowed Balbuena to gradually progress into the game and Connor Coventry, who also had a very good game at right back. But th that's the interesting thing. 
Connor Coventry's main position is uh, defensive midfield. Yep. And uh, I thought he also played at left back, but that was actually Joe Powell, not Coventry. Who Joe? No, Joe Powell's now gone. But uh, I think that's really good to hear as well because Con. I, I I've said that uh, if any of the um, uh, youngsters are going to break through this season, it's going to be Coventry. But Alessi, uh, he's he's 19 years of age, so you know if you're good enough, you know you're 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 old if you're old enough to to break into the team, and 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 why not? Because that could save us 20 million a for a centre back. But, here comes the butt though. To West Ham fashion, about 60 minutes into the game, he's tried. He's actually gone forward and tried to keep the ball in or try and cross the ball, whatever, and he's jarred his knee into the ground. And then he's, okay. he's he was lying down for a little while, and I thought, oh, no, because he's had such a good performance. He got back up and he played for a further couple of minutes, and then bang, uh, they made a substitution and brought Cardoso on for him. And he looked a bit sluggish coming off, so I'm really, you know, he was down for a good couple of minutes still, and when you look back at the replay, it's one of those ones where his body goes forward, but his leg is straight. So I'm just really hoping he's kind of got pulled through that and we get to see a little bit more. I think we play Brentford on Saturday. Um, so it'll be a good test against a, a positive, you know, a side that nearly came up to the Premier League this year. So it'll be a good kind of other test for West Ham. But I think Cobb what's, what's going to be interesting, mate, is um, is when, now that we've had this double header of games, um, it's going to be interesting who David Moyes keeps in the first team squad. You know, the, the, which, which youngsters... Uh, because he would have got a report from, uh, I think Irvin yeah. was at the Wickham game, so he would he would get a report a, a report from him, and I think maybe uh, Moyes will will it, it will be quite telling to see who he decides to sort of keep with the first team squad. We yeah. know we know we know Dengana, we know uh, Johnson already there. <clears throat> My feeling is Coventry will stay, but uh, if he decides to keep a Lacey there, there as well. That's not a bad little mixture of uh, youngsters breaking through. Absolutely not, mate. Absolutely not. Um, loads of comments are coming in asking about the rest of the, the, the performance. But, I mean, sorry for getting really excited about this young prospect. But it is nice to see. What, what it did do, though, was give Creswell a lot of confidence playing alongside him. And, you know, that side, there was literally, couldn't even fault anything really that went wrong in that side. Then what we got to see was a midfield. Let me get this, the, the team back up here. Um a midfield, you know, the, the, the Socek, Wilshire, Yarmolenko, Anderson, Diangana, and Haller. So, of course, I was really excited to see Diangana. And the funny thing was, Diangana was actually really quiet in the first half, although he's ended up the game with three assists. But what he does offer us still is a completely different outlet. He's actually really unpredictable. And who who played in what position, mate? Who played in centre attack? Yeah. Dean Gana played on the left. Between Yarmolenko and Anderson, they kept swapping throughout the game very consistently. So, so Anderson when, was playing primarily on the right-hand side? No, Anderson was playing straight through the middle. Oh, he was playing through the middle? Yeah, he was playing oh. through the middle. Yarmolenko was on the left. Uh, and yes. then they kind of... Yeah, and they just kept swapping in and out. And Yarmolenko kind of had a free role. He was out on the wing, but just drifting in all the time. And to be honest, he was actually probably, if not, apart from the fact that Haller scored a hat-trick and Diangana got a hat-trick of assists, Yarmolenko was up there for our most creative player. And I think someone else in the comments during the, uh, during the watch-along was constantly saying, I don't know why West Ham fans don't rate Yarmolenko. And I quickly addressed the comment by saying, listen, I am a fan of Yarmolenko. I know you are still. I we am. know he's got technically yeah. gifted footballer. But if he plays out of position, he's not got the legs for those positions. Yeah, he's a smart player. And if you look back uh, in our games after after uh, we came back from lockdown, and the way he the way he anticipated what was going to happen in the Chelsea game when we got the ball out of uh, defence, and he saw right Antonio was there, he's going to lay it off. I'm making my run, and he anticipated that. And I didn't think Yarmolenko was fast. But how he got from one end of the pitch to the other and all, and in order to sort of get that, you know, um, score that goal was yeah. superb. He's a technically yeah. gifted player. And, yeah. and this is it. This is it, you see. And I know he's coming, you know, he's he's not the sort of age that, that uh, Moyes might want. But I think even Moyes kind of suspects he's a player that's worth keeping around. He's a bit of a match winner. So long as he stays fit, so long as he stays fit, yeah. he, he's, a, he's a bit of a match winner. And I like him. I, I think the guy, if if we can get a whole season out of him, I reckon he's a ten, he's a double figure goals man. Quite yeah, easily. Yeah, he, he gets easy. 
he does get in those positions and he's really clever on the wing. Uh, he, he just has this ability to drop his shoulder and the player goes, but he's still got the ball. Yarmolenko still got the ball, so the play, he totally just sells the player off, and he stands. And he, he honestly looks like for for what they call a technically gifted player who's slow. He honestly looks like he can trick the players into going, stand yeah. and wave, take his time, and then do it again. He yeah. just constantly drops the shoulder all the time. It's brilliant to watch. Yeah. yeah. Um, alongside them, though, we had Anderson and Wilshire. And what you noticed about them, particularly in the first half, was they were trying to do the whole kind of. You remember when Wilshire was his prime at Arsenal? And in and around that kind of quartet of midfielders at Arsenal that you were playing ticky tacky football, short yeah. passes, move into space, short pass, move into space. Anderson and Wilshire were trying that a lot today. What they didn't have was other players around them that could do that. Now, I know Yarmolenko was capable of doing it, but he had this kind of free role and was waiting for a pass. We didn't have a the, the striker who was making the darting run, who was trying to get on the end of, of Anderson and Wilshire's thinking. So I'm trying to look at Anderson and think, what can he offer to our side? And, you know, today fans might slag him off. He didn't have a crap game. He didn't have the best game, but he wasn't our worst player and he wasn't yep. our best player today. Now, I know he at one point was being our record signing, but he's also not been training with the squad. And this was his, you know, we didn't expect, did we expect to see him today? Because I didn't. So when he was put in the starting lineup, I was like, oh, cool, cool. There's Anderson. So hopefully we start to see a little bit more. Hopefully, for me personally, I want his head to be held high. I like the fact that he supported Hilaire. My only annoying factor was in the second half, they actually did put him up front beside Hilaire, which made me think again, oh, is this a kind of, we don't know where you are, so we're just going to yeah. put you up top with Hilaire to try and support him. I mean, you know, Anderson's best position through the middle, played his best Kent, football. Kent is right. I completely agree with you, Kent. Yeah. And, I, and I said, I think, again, in, in a recent show, one of the best performances I saw Anderson play was not last season, but the season before. It's one of our first games. It was the first game away to uh, Arsenal that season. We, we got beat, but um, Anderson played through the middle and he yeah. was superb. He, I yeah. mean, he, he, and I think... You know, you know, some of these flair players, they get slagged off because they look like they don't work hard enough. The reason why they're flair players is because they, they're flair players. They don't, yeah. you know, you don't, you don't want the likes of Anderson to be playing out on the left, have to keep dropping back to, to help out the, 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 uh, the left back or the right back or whatever. That's not his, that's not his style, of, style of game. And I think if he's actually played through the middle, I think he will be a better foil for... Um, uh, Hilaire, I think uh, he'll get the. He's the sort of player that he gets his confidence back. He'll be an ideal player to play in or around Hilaire, you know, definitely, without a doubt. What we saw in Hilaire today, though, was confidence. I mean, I know we're playing the first game of preseason, I know we're playing a lower league team, but it's always good. And I think I said it during the stream. I was like, it doesn't matter what position or what team you're playing. If you score goals, it gives a player confidence. Um, and okay, Dean Gana done a lot of the hard work for all of the assists for him, and but he still had to put the ball in the back of the net, and he was in the right place at the right time, and he was supported a little bit more today, and you know at one point he was actually flicking the ball with the back of his heel, he was doing a couple of rabonas, and he done it once, and I think you came on the stream still when he done it, he he. he penetrated the defence straight through to Yarmolenko, who hit the post at the time. And it was all created from Hilaire. And Hilaire actually, in theory, even though Dean Gana got one of the assists, Hilaire created that chance from start to finish. He was involved in the whole build-up play. He this, was getting themselves at the right place at the right time. This is the sort of thing that we've been talking about for quite some time, isn't it? Do you remember at the beginning of last season when we bought four nows in and we were talking about all our attacking players, you know, how how excited we were, you know, with the likes of Allaire and Fornals and Lanzini and Anderson, Yarmolenko, all these players, we were like salivating. We were going, my God, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be scoring a hatful of goals against every team that we play. And, uh, and I think um, we were kind of, I think these players were kind of stifled. Uh, um, Pellegrini did it, which was a surprise because he loves his flair players, but he kind of didn't play them in the formation that would have got the best out of them. And then when Moyes came in, because we were struggling, he had no choice but to do the same. Yeah. But if we can, if we can um, get that solid defensive, that solid midfield foundation, uh, which would be hard to penetrate, 
you can imagine the likes of Hilaire mixing with Anderson or Diangana, Yarmolenko, Fornells, whoever it might be. You know, all, and any combination of those players playing in a sort of a kind of a, a three up front, knowing that there's a solid defence behind them. Then you've got the likes of Bowen as well, you know, and stuff like that. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of, uh, you hope that if they're played in the right way, you, these these are the players that can get a hat full of goals for you. You yeah. know, absolutely. And and we and there's all this talk about going out. We have to buy a flair player. We don't have to buy flair players. What, what, what Moyes knows is we've got to buy a few more solid defenders. So these flair players are free to actually play their game. Absolutely. Um, you know, like I said, Dean Gana probably has a lot to play in in, in the in the threat that that Haller op, um, offered today. Because, like I said, he he, he was extremely unpredictable. He's a clever footballer. <laughs> um, you know, he was quiet in the first half, but he just came to life in the second half. And, you know, that's what West Ham fans want to see is, is young players be given an opportunity and fight for a position um, for the up and coming season. Um, a few other things of note really were the fact that we used all the subs bar the keeper. So we didn't get to see Roberto today. <laughs> But what we did get to see was Cardosa came off the bench and yeah, he kind of he kind of started he left off where Alice started, but he wasn't, you know, it was, it was all right. He had a decent performance. He played a good uh, 40 min 35 minutes, so he done all right. We got to see Lewis and Kemp um for the last what was, what was Alfie Lewis like? Never saw anything really. They were really quiet by that okay. point. Um they both came on to play in the midfield and, and literally we played the balls down the wing for the rest of the game. So they hardly got a hold of the ball. Um, it was really interesting because, again, doing the watch along, you're commentating and you hardly mentioned their name. So they really had nothing to do with it. And then we brought on the young lad, um, Odubiku. Oh, 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 He's a Republic of Ireland. Um, With a name like that? Yeah, youth international, born and bred in Republic of Ireland. Okay. Uh, youth international, youth international for them, and he actually we signed him from Manchester United still, and he's prolific. He was prolific at Manchester United, um, when he was there. So what's intriguing is how we how we managed to bring him into our books. But he came on and he went up front with Haller, and you know he had a couple of touches. He held the ball really well. He passed out, made some space. Never had a chance, but. It was just nice to see another youth player come on. So that really kind of brings to an end, I suppose, our review of those two games. Should we now talk about who wasn't there? Yes. Oh, were you going to say something else? Oh, no, that's what I was just going to say. You are going to say, OK, let's go through them, shall we? Fabianski yep. wasn't there. Fredericks wasn't there. Diop wasn't there. Um, and of Mr. course... Declan, Declan Rice. Declan Rice wasn't there. Yeah. Yep. And today... One of the Go players, on. or I think there was a lot of people looking into it, but Declan, uh, someone wore Declan Rice's number today. Um, and oh, there was really? Lot... Number 41? Yeah. I can't remember if it was one of the young lads. That's um... only because Declan's taken the number five shirt. <laughs> I hope. Uh, yeah. not, 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 the che not the Chelsea number five shirt, the West Ham number five. I certainly no, don't, he... I don't read too much into the, 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 the squad number specifically over that, but I think still we're putting two and two together and we think we're coming uh, up with the right answer. But people are kind of coming in the comments here saying that they're pretty confident that um, it is what we think it is, which is. Yeah, I think I think it's obvious because uh, when I did uh, the show on Sunday and I did a piece on, on him, I gave five options as to uh, why it might be he didn't go to Scotland. Uh, and then I was reminded Fredericks wasn't in Scotland either. And I think we kind of knew that anyway. Uh, and I was told, don't forget, they were both on holiday together. Yep. And lo and behold, that now starts to make sense. Because I suggested, well, he, he was he went didn't go to Scotland because he was given a, a longer rest than everyone else, but, which is rubbish because he was at Rush Green on the Monday, uh, the day before they went to Scotland. And I, I said, Declan maybe got a little knock and had to stay behind. Or he was signing his, uh, you know, his new owners didn't want him to go and train, which is, I think, is just not true. But, you know, it's that speculation. And then I suggested that uh, perhaps he's, uh, he's, uh, he's isolating. 
And I yeah. think that's what it is. And and I, what I'd really wish is to stop all the rumours is for the club to turn around and say, we know there are 14 players out of 12 teams who are isolating. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, it, it, there's, a, there's more than the 50-50 chance, there's a 60% chance that one or two of those players are from West Ham. Yeah. So all they've got to say is, you know, they, they, they're, they're self-isolating, they'll be fine, they'll be back in a few weeks' time or whenever it may be and, and, and have done with it. Don't hide it. But they don't, no... they, they, they don't work that way still. But what, you know, everyone's extremely confident in the comments there saying that Declan Rice is not going anywhere. I completely don't want them to go anywhere. And I don't, I'm not sitting here trying to start a rumour in any way whatsoever. But what I am saying is there's not a player that's not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> He's not switching nationality today. He's been included in the setup actually um, in the England squad today as well. He's, he's not like he's not like Anton here who switched nationality from Scottish to English. So yeah. come on. Yeah. <laughs> No, but my, he's, isol he's isolating, isn't he? It's obvious. It's yeah, obvious. But there is a concern about it because if if Abramovich, Abramovich wants to splash the money and give West Ham the money that we would want to take for Declan Rice, they'll take it. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I've not seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> Say that again. Say that again. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna listen to the to the. Uh, not gonna. Um, read it. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think all players are for sale, and if if Chelsea actually turn up and pay the money, then I think he could go. Still, I really do think he could go. I don't not, want but not this summer, but still, but I, I, mean, I, I, I know you're saying that. But if he was, if we were offered eighty million, still, our board will not turn that down. I, I, I actually really genuinely think when 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 they're saying, you know, I, I think every player uh, in the squad definitely has has a price. I think Declan is probably one of the ones that they will just say, not yet, not yet. Um, yeah, that's true, Dan, he did. Um, I, I I think it'll be, it'll just be, I think even Declan will give, will give, will want to give us another season. Listen, I, I'm, I yeah. really want to see that comment there. I completely agree with you, Ernest. It's the most sensible business decision. And, but even like in a career that's a good point, that's a good point, you know, short, short term, Short-term gain for long-term pain, yeah, or exactly. long-term exactly. pain for oh, I can't remember. The vice versa. If, you, if you think if we sold him, I mean, okay, if we know damn well if we sold him for eighty million, you know damn well not all that money will be used. And just 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 for what Ernest just said about cash flow, the board will probably turn around to uh, uh, Moyes and say, "We got eighty million for him. You can you can spend fifty of that because we're." We're putting the other 30 million for cash flow. So you go 50 million and you know Moyes wants to go and buy defenders. So let's say for argument's sake, he goes out and buys a left back and a centre back. And, and there you go. That's 25 million spent, give or take. He's got he's got 25 million left. What's he going to do with that? You can't but, buy a re Declan replacement for 25 million. You can't. Can, but what you can do is you can bargain with some of the players you've got in the squad that you're willing to, to get rid of in that squad. You know, I mean you just don't know really what they could do. Barkley could be up for grabs. Some of their defenders could be up for grabs if they want to get that man in. And and, and, and if he is, the rumour is that Abramovich has literally got a little bit of an open checkbook right now and has given it to Lampard and going, who do you want? Go and build, go and give me the success that you think you need. And there's no ifs or buts about it. Lampard will be looking at Declan Rice going, I fancy him. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Knowing that he's a Chelsea boy and all that sort of stuff, yeah. his whole family are Chelsea, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and it, it makes absolute sense to uh, Frank Lampard. It doesn't make sense to West Ham. So, yeah. And right now, West Ham are in the driving seat. And, and as much as we are in financial difficulty, as most clubs are, because of the COVID situation and all that sort of stuff, I think, I think uh, um, Moyes will sanction sales of other players before he would even remotely want to sanction the Here, sale of Declan Rice. Here's you hoping. Know? Here's hoping that you know some of the videos and some of the comments that Moises is is coming out and saying is actually. <laughs> 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 Let's just hope that, um, the board are listening to Moise. I do think Moise. I do think Moise has given me the impression he's in a little bit of the driving seat. I know he's not in full blown control. But he is a he's a man that you know. I don't get my way. 
I'm off. I I I just can't be. I wouldn't put it against. I wouldn't put it against them. But yeah, I mean, there, there you go. It looks like Palace have pretty much got the deal over the line for Etsy. You know, West Ham are probably the only club in the world that you, would have would have an asset still that do you QPR know what? Want, that QPR. Do you know, no, do you know what? We don't need Eze. Uh, you know, we actually don't need. We don't need a, a Barretti Eze. We yeah. don't need uh, Sayad. Uh, what's his name? Ben Rama from Brentford. Look at the players. Look at what we just spent half an hour talking about. Yeah. We talked about okay, okay. They're not all the all young, but we talked. We just talked about Yarmolenko. We talked about even Anderson. You know, had an all right game. We we talked about uh, Diangana. We've talked about Alaire. We you know uh, Bowen. Um, you know, we, we've got we. There's about half a dozen players that we're talking about that Eze would have to compete against if we don't get rid of. We don't need a Barici Eze because if we keep those players and we play them in the right way, we, we, there's no need for him. So yeah. we get carried away with all the rumours. We get carried away with, you know, the fact that we're up for... And and the, the whole media circus goes, uh, we're up for this player, that player, et cetera, et cetera. Look at the show I do on Sunday. About a dozen players are mentioned. And then every and then and then there's another dozen on top of that, and another dozen on top of that. And then when we don't sign anyone, everyone goes, "Oh, we're we're shit. Look at what's wrong with us. We're not buying anyone." Moyes is going to go out and buy maybe three players at most, of which think, two will be defenders. I think the interesting thing is though, if Etsy, what does turn out to be one of his targets? The point I think I'm trying to make here is that we had a player that would have gone back to QPR that would have held some value. Yeah, in, exactly. And. Would we have potentially stretched out more than two point six million? Maybe, maybe, maybe there's an example. Maybe the club just couldn't afford to pay the rest. Well, until mate, another player. Have you thought if if he was really desperate for Eze, 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 he would have he would have turned turned around to the board and said, "Let's do, let's hang on to Ale, uh, Ale, let's hang on to Hugill, and until and once we get that, we build that money up by selling other players. Then I want to go in for him. So, uh, I oh, don't do that, when guys, mate, don't. <laughs> Um, so if he was really keen on him, he would have gone to the board, right? I want to get rid of another couple of players. We'll build up a 10 million kitty and then we'll go, you have 10 million in Hugill. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, I think he's a player that he's seen, but I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily think he's a player that he's desperate for. Yeah. I think he's desperate for defenders. You know, we need a left back. Uh, and it's great that some of these youngsters have come in at centre back and done really well today. But uh, ideally, we probably need a centre back as well. And and I think if Moyes only if Moyes only brings in two players, and I think we'll we'll need a lone player. I think we'll need a, a lone player to cl- maybe to cover up front, and that'll be our business. That will be our business. Two or three players, and that'll be it. You yeah. know. Listen, there's loads of rumours, loads of comments coming in still. Shall we call the show tonight um, and then come back to you? I mean, there Absolutely, because seems- we can go on all night about all the yeah, players. Literally, we're and, and listen, if any of you have not caught it, still guest appeared. And maybe <laughs> we don't know if it's going to be a regular thing on more, no, than, just no, 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 no. Um, more than just a podcast that was uh, aired today. So make sure you check that out um, and go and listen to the podcast. It was actually good, good listening. Um, and then, of course, we've got loads of other videos coming out the rest of the week, so make sure you get the comments in. Subscribe, hit the like button, let your West Ham friends know that we exist. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, oh no, I'll talk to you about that afterwards. Yeah. But I, I actually, I'd really be intrigued, and I, quite seriously, if you can leave comments, when you're looking for West Ham um, content. Uh, content on YouTube, do you find Irons United easily, or does it not automatically appear? We'd be really intrigued to find out, because we were told... Yeah, uh, last night that it's not always easy to find our channel. It's probably why we only got three people watching tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I, we'd really like to know. You know, does it pop up easy or does it not? And you know, well, if you can help us out, we'll yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah. give us your feedback in the comments. <laughs> I've started. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, sorry, mate. Go on. I, I kind of keep going off so track. Just make sure you subscribe, like, hit the subscribe button, uh, like all your, what is it? Here we go. Let's have a look here what it says. I searched West Ham friendly earlier. Oh, that's show. good. So, yeah, that's pretty good. cool. Okay. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Keep your comments coming in once the video finishes, and we'll try and reply to as many as we can. Um, and yeah, West Ham walked away today. I was going to say with three points. But we <laughs> six points still six, six points. points, yeah, six pointer. 
one up well, we scored. We scored. I can't remember eight, the scores. Eight, Five one and nine, nine goals. The, the result today was nine two West Ham. Nine two. I mean, that's not bad going, is it, for a team that apparently needs? Uh, thank you, Josh. It's not yeah. bad going for a team that apparently needs uh, attacking players. You know, yeah, not bad at all. Anyway, um, he's been stale wherever he is. There, I've been Anton, and this is Angenated. Come on, you irons. <laughs> <laughs>